Hey, welcome back to Pathfinder Kingmaker, everyone. This is Melendris, and uh, today we figure out how to play, record, and edit this game so that it's good. So anyway, forget this place. We'll come back here later. We're going to go mess with some trolls. A uh, random encounter. Someone on the road. Get ready. Uh, more trolls? I'm guessing more trolls. I shall end. Shh! Stinky, lousy, something, something, or others. Uh, ferocious troll hound. So just like trolls, but dogs. Gotcha. All right, Valerie. Uh, let's get right up in here. Uh, so let's go ahead. We'll bless. That is super unfortunate. Uh, let's have a Miri. Yeah, we'll go ahead. Rage. This one's going to act next. We're not having a whole lot of luck. Poor, unfortunate rolls. Yeah, that's three of them. She can take it. She'll be fine. Uh, what? I don't see... It, sa it says remove regeneration. Energy, acid, fire. Is that only after it goes down? Oh, no, see? There it is. There, It's dead. Okay. Uh, did this one get hit by the fireball? Yeah, I think it did. Okay. Yeah, sure. And you miss again. Yeah, I would like to delay my turn. Thank you. She doesn't care. Yeah, take that attacker opportunity. Channel positive energy, please. Thank you very much. Octavia, another Scorching Ray. Very nice, 24 sneak attack. Uh, Lindsay, 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 Lindsay. Yeah, that's one way to ignore attacks of opportunity. I just stand up here. No, oh, no, can't use a potion because I moved. That's fine. That's all right. All right, do another dazzling display. There we go. They're all shaken. Very nice. All right, so we need fire damage on that guy. All right, let's move right up next to these guys. Uh, Tristian, Tristian, Tristian. Yeah, just walk up here and burning hands this thing. There we go. Okay, so we need to fire that thing. Octavia. Okay, go ahead and ray of fire that and miss. You needed a two, Octavia. You needed a two or higher. A two or higher, Octavia. Oh, uh, what is this? Corrosive touch? Sure, I am never going to use this. There we go. Yay! I used a scroll that I never would have used otherwise. Uh, let's see. Yep, stab. Fire. Fire, fire, fire. Yeah, sure, acid flask. Well, human, today you've helped the Dwarmer Cat. The Dwarmer Cat does not forget those who help her. We shall meet again, perhaps. Who knows? Hello, sir. Who is this? Who approaches? Stefano Moscani. The man before you reeks of vanity. His black hair is curled, styled, and generously waxed. From the hair atop his head to the points of his mustache, his cheeks and forehead are powdered white, giving him a pallid look. His hands rest casually on the golden hilt of his rapier. Alright, I'm guessing I'm gonna hate this guy. As he approaches, a mean, sly smile appears on his face, clearly practiced and prepared in advance. Ah, he's designed to be hated. Okay. 
Ah, the ruler of this barony. I'm flattered by your attention. Sir Stefano Mosconi of Patax, at your service. The man performs a derisive bow. I don't like the direction of this conversation. Yeah, right? Yeah, I can already tell. I'm not going to... What brings a Pataxian noble to my barony? I was just traveling back home to glorious Patax after paying a visit to Rostov, all in service to King Castruccio Irovetti. I thought I might take a day to visit the capital of Patax's bold new neighbor. Sir Stefano sniffs, then grins. I must stay. I really should have spared myself the trouble. It's hardly worth saying. Uh, but yes, a neutral option. A five-year-old could tell you're deliberately trying to offend me, Sir Stefano. Perhaps you could just tell us directly what it is you came here for. Sir Stefano stares at you and snorts. <laughs> you know, the initial goal of my visit was to take measure of your so-called barony. To see if you had anything of value to offer to Patax. And you know what I found? I do not care what you found. Nothing. You have absolutely nothing to offer. So Stefano continues on without giving you a chance to respond. Military. Weak. Culture. Weak. Economy. Weak. You best pray to all the gods that my king Irovetti doesn't declare war on you. On the other hand, maybe you should pray he conquers you. This mess of a barony could use the rule of a proper king. No matter how weak my barony may be, you have no right to speak to me in such a tone. Indeed. What was I thinking? What value could there be in speaking to someone who can barely understand the words of an educated noble? I've learned what I wish to know. I bid you farewell. Okay. I am um, legitimate confusion. Ah, Jad Kafkin. Your grace, we are victorious. We fought off the spider invasion and defeated the strange dryad who led them. As a sign of gratitude, your subjects have a special reward for you. 2,800 gold. Very nice. I wonder... Was this flood of spiders truly caused by that curse? I mean, the curse must be ancient and very ominous. The spiders were definitely scary as well, but they weren't ancient or ominous. I agree with Lindsay. This does seem strange. Seems more like the plot of an insane dryad than a true curse. Then how can we explain the dismal atmosphere on the bald hilltop? The pressure both of us felt there, Jod. Maybe the curse drove the poor dryad insane, causing her to lead this spider invasion into the barony. Tristian shakes his head incredulously. In any case, I have alarming news. As soon as the spider invasion was over, I visited the bald hilltop again. It's grown quiet once more and just as gloomy as before. I don't think the curse is broken, just laying low, like a monster that rests before it feeds again. I want to deal with this problem once and for all. What do you recommend? Yes, let's level the bald hilltop to the ground and put an end to the curse. I don't think that's how curses work, Lindsay. But I appreciate your gusto. I doubt we'll be able to defeat it in such a straightforward fashion. The heart of the curse is undoubtedly centered on the bald hilltop, but the spiders appeared all throughout the barony. I don't think we are going to do any damage to the curse by destroying the hilltop. I would expect exactly the opposite. We'd only provoke it into attacking again, immediately on the hills of the last. No, the best we can do for now is make sure we're prepared for the next attack. Don't be such a pessimist, Tristian. We might truly be able to overcome the curse, but only by studying it thoroughly. Your grace, I will gather all the information available on this situation and get to work. 
how much time do we have? Oh, a fair amount. I'd say half a year or even more. Now that the bald hilltop is quiet again, I can barely feel its evil will. I'm sure we'll have enough time to prepare for the next attack. What? Again? I am sorry for bringing the bad news. Unfortunately, we failed to defeat this curse for good. Well, let's prepare for the next attack. Tristan nods. Very wise. If only we knew more about the curse. We, we might figure out some way to fight it. Lindsay frowns. I don't understand. I spoke to the locals. They never had any spider invasions before. And nothing ever happened on the bald hilltop before either. Now both spiders and the curse. Right when the new barony appeared in the stolen lands. All of this seems highly coincidental. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Let's see, let's speak to Lander. A tall young man of about 17 stands before you. He's athletic in his composure. He's athletic and his composure and bearing hint at nobility. The writers of this game use words that people have never heard of. Like perspicacious, and yet in the game they write sentences like this mind boggling. As you approach, Lander stops studying his fingernails, his broad smile revealing brilliant white teeth. Ha! Oh, Greedy! You certainly seem to be in high spirits. Truly high spirits indeed. Just this morning I received news from Bravoy. My illustrious mother, may the gods prolong her years, is terribly upset by the disappearance of yours truly. Lander's smile twists into a sneer. She's dispatched search parties to the neighboring provinces. Discreetly, of course. She fears whatever scandal might arise due to my absence, Lander says. Well, it's not the first time she's gone to such lengths. I'd like to learn more about you. Me? But I'm such a bore. Lander huffs indignantly, though he's clearly flattered by your attention. What would you like to know? Well, tell me about your family. House Libera is considered one of the most influential in Bravoy, and rightfully so. We own the fertile lands around, Ra uh, around Lake Rayco and the castle of Silverhall, an impressive structure famous well beyond Bravoy's borders. We also control a significant amount of the lake and river shipping trade in the region. And if it's my family that's of interest to you, my father passed away not long ago. My mother spent years attempting to marry my sister Elena off to our beloved king, Leleski Sertova. As for myself, well, the family remembers I exist on the rare or not so rare occasions that when I end up causing everyone trouble. Lander gives a disarming smile. Judging by your judging by that story, it seems no one is truly close to you. Close relations are a luxury that some people can't afford. Lender looks away for a moment before continuing. I once became close to a man I considered to be a mentor and a friend. I later learned he'd been using me to acquire information on my house's caravans for some local bandits. I learned much from that experience, and so I shall watch your entourage with a keen eye. I won't allow any untrustworthy or suspicious people to go unnoticed. You can trust me on that. What do you value most in people? Decisiveness, Lander answers immediately, then adds, Well, a sensible decisiveness. I've no taste for those who sit and mumble all day when the time to act has come, nor for those who rush in without consideration or planning. You came of age two years ago. Why, Libetta, are you still heir to the throne and not sitting upon it yourself? A throne is a curious thing. It owns you more than you own it. My mother bent over backwards to draw me into possession of my father's legacy, but I... I would like Lander to really see and do something in this world before he becomes Lord Libetta. 
you will return home eventually, won't you? Of course. Can't let a throne sit empty, after all. Especially not one so wealthy. Lander's eyes gleam. I will return. Someday. But for now, my house can wait. Let us return to this conversation later. Why not? Lander shrugs. I need to discuss politics and affairs of the barony with you. Always glad to provide counsel, Lander smiles. Any news from Bavoy? How Sertova openly denounces you and your barony. Nothing more than loud words as yet, though. The Sword Lords of Rustov are concerned about some of the freedoms you allow yourself, but they're still showing a good face over a bad game. House Libetta remains neutral, for now at least. But rest assured, once I return home, we'll wholeheartedly support the friendship between our nations. What's going on between the Royal House Sertova and the Aldori Sword Lords? To be blunt, sly schemers battling for power against stubborn blusterers. Long ago, both of them ruled a kingdom of their own. The Sertovas ruled over Issia and the Aldori Sword Lords over Rossland. Eh. Then, Coral Rogarvia came in with his dragons and made it abundantly clear to everyone that everything they saw around them was his. <clears throat> Who do you think ran quickest to express their deep devotion and loyalty? It certainly wasn't the Aldori. They fought to the last, and they almost died out as a result. Over the next two centuries, the Sertovas squeezed everything they could from the benevolence of their rulers. And now, after the vanquishing of the Rogovia line, Noleski Sertova has seized the throne. But the Sertovas owe a blood debt to half of Bravoy. It will prove difficult for them to hold on to that power. This makes them paranoid. They see enemies everywhere, and the Aldori are no exception. What's my barony's role in the sertova aldori conflict? I'm certain they'll keep trying to win my support. The Aldori are brave and senseless. You're more likely to pull them out of trouble than be the one receiving aid. And the Sertovas are smart, but they'll gladly sell you out if they see profit in it. They're also unbearably boring. All of which means you made a wide decision when you picked me as your ally, Lander smiles. I wouldn't pander to either of them but I'd also avoid angering either of them until there's good cause. What can you tell me of the River Kingdoms? Have you ever seen a jar full of spiders? It's much the same, only on a greater scale. A plethora of small nations and city-states that form spontaneously and dissipate just as rapidly. Nevertheless, there are those that could potentially pose a serious threat, or become a promising ally. Patax makes a fine example here. Hmm. That's enough business for now. Of course, Lander nods. The world is plenty interesting, even without politics, wouldn't you say? Uh, do you have any advice for me, Lander? Take care around Sir Stefano. On his way from Bavoy to Patax? On his way from Bavoy to Patax... And he happens here by chance? Unlikely. Very unlikely. My thoughts exactly, Lander. How do you like being a regent? It gives me great satisfaction, Your Grace. The very thought of how much I influence the barony. Ah, but you must be asking after my responsibilities. All matters are well in hand, and by no means do they hamper my other affairs. Sounds good, Lander. We'll speak later. No, I'm not going to do that for every character, but I figure that going through and catching up on some of the characters from time to time is... Ah, uh, it's just fun. I like it. What is this ruined watchtower? An ancient and half-ruined watchtower lost in the depths of the Gnarl Marches is a local point of interest and a source of inspiration for several legends in the area. These tales compete with each other, telling of the tower's construction, and more popularly, 
more popularly. Telling of the tower's construction, and more often, its destruction by mysterious, incomprehensible, and usually supernatural forces. The truth is a bit more prosaic. Again, with a thesaurus using nonsense by the game writers. Prosaic, having the style or diction of prose, lacking poetic beauty, commonplace, unromantic. Used in a sentence, the writer's obvious use of a thesaurus into their day-to-day -day jobs is prosaic at best. The truth is a bit more boring. The watchtower was built by dwarves and used to guard a local trade route, which last saw you centuries ago. Clear proof of this can be seen in the statue of Torah that stands near the foot of the watchtower. Should we check it out? I think we should check it out. So check out this ruined watchtower while we head over to the Verdant Chambers to meet up with the nymph and hopefully get some information on the trolls in uh, in the Null Marches. So here we are at the ruined watchtower. A road sounds like a good place to start exploring. Hello, what do we have here? Uh, grass has sprouted between the cobbles of this ancient road. Hello, dog. Woof, woof. Woof, woof. Follow me. What do we have? Alright, there's a bird. Woof. What is it, boy? What are you trying to tell us? I can't see because there's a freaking tree in the way. Oh, uh, Ikundayo. Following the strange wolf, you climb the top of the hill. There you see a man sitting under a spreading bush. The wolf runs up to him and sits near, whimpering. Whom you brought? Get lost, dog. You're not needed here. He raises his arm as if to hit the wolf. But the animal doesn't even try to dodge, still whining. The man's hand goes down, never finishing the blow. The man staggers to his feet. You notice there's blood soaking the right side of his leather leggings. He's very tall, rather lanky. While he stands before you, leaning on his bow, his hurt leg trembles slightly, and the right side of his leggings darkens again with fresh bleeding. Nevertheless, the man doesn't reveal his pain, except for a strained jaw and a heavy gaze. Ekundayo. The man says, looking straight into your eyes. Wow, sounds like a spell. Shut, shut, shut up, Octavia. I guess you were wrong. This is his name. No way. Who could have guessed that? Oh my it god. I hate both of them. <clears throat> I am Melandrius. I'm the Baron of these lands. Nice to meet you. Are you decent? You're bleeding. We need to patch you up. Patched up already. This wound isn't the deadliest. Fair enough. You're not local, are you? What was your first guess? Why is this a question? The name gave it up. Or my skin color. Yes, red and nourished up away from here. Why is your wolf whining? Not mine. Oh. Fooled me. Yes, I am a friend. So what are you doing here? Sitting, waiting, hunting. Who? Can I help you? Why Why do you assume it's a who? Why? Why not ask... A what? It's like, what? Hunting what? Assuming that he's hunting a person. See, I really enjoy the story, but I hate the writing. Uh, let's go ahead and ask him who. Can I help you? Lured your curiosity. Saves me right. We'll start again. Alright, again. The name's Ekondayo. Ekon for decent ones. Used to be a carpenter in the Bristle Hill village. 
trolls attacked, killed everyone but me. We'll show them that was a mistake. So he's hunting trolls. How fortuitous I am as well. They all deserve death. Kargad, most of all. Hmm. Rock troll. He led them. A rock troll named Kargad. How did you get wounded? I've been hunting trolls until they have hunted back. The wound can't stop the hunting, just slows it down. How can a mere carpenter be chasing trolls effectively? You were not always a baron. True. Here, I was not always a carpenter. Nothing to lose anymore. Well, that is understandable. Did you know that local trolls are not afraid of fire now? No, didn't. Fire arrows couldn't murder them. Now I know the reason. I had no chance here. I can see it now. Why are you sitting on the hill? Troll feet often followed this path. Can't hunt them anymore. That's why I wait. They will come here eventually. I am hunting the trolls as well. Would you like to combine our efforts? Akun's face gets a trifle calmer. You can see he's glad to hear your offer. We'll mark on your map all the places where troll feet tread the land. Troll's lair must be somewhere nearby. Excellent. All right. We have a lead on how to get these trolls out of my lands. The spirit is strong, but the body falters. We'll follow you wherever you need, but this wound must be tended by healers in the capital. Don't want to burden. Fair enough. One more thing before we go. Troll feet tread this path often. Would like to stay here until they appear. Ambushing some trolls instead of them interrupting my travels. Uh, before we go, I'd like to ask you some questions. You have my respect, but the answers shall be postponed. Swear by Torag the time for question will come after Kargad's last breath is drawn. A deal. Uh, stay in ambush. This is a great place for an ambush. Let's wait. Three hours. Ah, trolls. Another branded troll, too. Look at that. Let's try out this gentleman here in exchange for Octavia, because frankly, I'm not a big fan of Octavia. All right. Don't hesitate. Let's go ahead, drop a bless. You drop aspect of whatever that is. Shall we move? We shall move. Go ahead and drop that. Let's see, let's go with a shield of faith on Valerie. How about that? Let's see. Go ahead and Cannot hit this guy. Charge. You cannot charge. Alright. How about glitter dust? Yeah, that looks pretty good. Oh, why can't you rage? Oh, she's fatigued. Let's see. Well, Tristian, fireball time. Oh, right. The branded trolls are immune to fire. Uh, move up here, Tristan, so we can get a prayer next turn. That sounds great. Uh, let's go ahead. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. Uh, let's see. Which one of these guys is... Well, that guy's no pretty much dead. But... Uh, dog. Go take care of that guy. There we go. That dog has a lot of health. Uh, let's see, what about a grease? 
Yeah. All right, Valerie. And Mary, you come take care of this one. Uh, Tristian, if you could also shoot this gentleman here. And I will start working on this guy. Cool. Kundayo. Why are their groans so loud? Jeez. Like, they're not sleeping. Oh. This guy. Didn't this guy get hit with, like. Yeah, scorching ray, this guy. Alright, he's dead. Oh, dog's down. Sorry, dog. What about, like, hideous laughter? Oh, this poor troll. Lindsay is just destroying this troll. Uh, we need acid of some sort. I'll just give her an acid flask then. Bleh. Uh, as much as I like Ikundayo, I think I'm going to have to swap him back out for Olivia because she's really the only reliable source of like arcane spells. So kind of sucks, but it is what it is, man. I do like dog too, but either way, I think that's where we'll leave it off for today. Uh, we have, we came out here, we succeeded in our mission of getting information on the trolls. So we now have a number of places to go explore uh, tomorrow or the coming days to track down the trolls and get rid of this troll threat to our lands once and for all. So I'd like to thank you for stopping by today. I appreciate your time and I will see you tomorrow. Hey, just here as an afterwards uh, in regards to the, uh, the triggering earlier. Uh, I realized that Owlcat is based in Moscow. Uh, English probably isn't their first language. Uh, and in fact, I would imagine that the game was originally done in Russian. And then they send it off to, to a localization team. The localization team takes care of translating everything into English. So... When I refer to the game writers with this knowledge now that I have, uh, it's not really directed towards Owlcat. It's more directed towards whoever was doing the translations. I have no idea why they wouldn't use more day-to-day -day language in the translation, like in the English translation. That doesn't make any sense to me. I don't, like, I have no idea. Uh, it must have been, like, an aspiring creative writing major on the team or something Be beats me man i it was the weirdest weirdest thing that i have read in a while anyway that's all thanks bye